Hey guys, Ivan here with the old school apps and uh, in this video we're gonna check out what the blasting of Audible is looking like at about seven and a half weeks out of New York Pro. So we are about seven and a half weeks out and we have an update of him and we also have an update of his rivals, uh, Justin Luis Rodriguez and Nick Walker. We're gonna check them out after we see what the blasting is looking like. So here in this photo you can see that he is getting conditioned, right? I mean, he's still looking huge. He looks really big. I really like the proportion, uh, lower to upper body, that ratio looks really good. I like to see really dominant legs, and in this side shot he really does have them. And also the length of the torso compared to the, to the leg size, to the leg length. Yeah, I like that. It's definitely way better when guys have short torsos and long legs. Uh, some people don't really have that. For example, Nick Walker, he's not really known for that, but me personally, I prefer it this way. It looks way more aesthetic. And he also has huge arms, like his upper body is not smaller than his lower body, just really well proportionate. So Blessing of Wadibo, he is a genetic freak, like he is a genetic marble. Lately we haven't really seen so many guys who have such a nice flow, and I, didn't, I wasn't sure he's gonna look like this maybe a year ago or two years ago. I saw him, I noticed him, he was huge, he had solid muscle bellies and everything, but to look like this, I, I mean I, I couldn't know that, of course. And now, since he made a lot of progress, you can see his physique is starting to look really aesthetic and he's kind of resembling a guys like Flex Wheeler, right? I mean, probably him the most. Maybe guys like Kevin Levroni and the others. Ronnie Coleman, maybe in some ways. So he has those genetics, he has those muscle bellies, those freaky muscle bellies, the shape, the roundness, everything. Very good proportion, small waist as well. Really amazing physique. I'm not saying that he's gonna win the New York Pro. But I am saying that this guy has a crazy amount of potential and we'll see what's gonna happen with his physique within the next 3 to 5 years. Alright, Nick Walker. Now, you can see his progression here as well. You can see that he lost, uh, well, probably a lot of water and, and some fat. He wasn't really fat to begin with, but he is starting to look really conditioned. And what's the point of this, of this post? Mainly, it's the waist, right? I mean, he has received some negative criticism about his waist though he doesn't really seem to believe that he has a thick waist even though he kind of does i mean from the side you cannot really see it from the back as well but from the front it does look a little bit thicker i mean let's be honest and he's kind of showing it to us in this angle where he leans forward a little bit creating an angle in which his shoulders are closer to the camera and they look bigger than the waist so yeah, from I mean, in this photo right here in this gym selfie, his waist does look kind of small, but on the stage you will notice the difference between him and Blessing. So he's not exactly blessed like Blessing is with a crazy small waist, but he is though blessed with an ability to build a lot of muscle in a short time span. He's a young guy and he's such a massive monster. So we're gonna see what he looks like when he gets really conditioned with all that mass. But here, yeah, he, he got conditioned pretty pretty well. We still have more than eight weeks, right? So seven and a half weeks, actually. So when he, once he gets really conditioned, that's going to be amazing. All right, next, Justin Rodriguez. Now, it's kind of not really relevant to mention him because I do think he has probably the biggest chances to win this show after Hassan Mustafa, if he, does it, if he actually does it. But the reason why I am, I'm not sure if I should post this and talk about it is because his photos are, are very often low quality. I mean, this photo, for example, it's a weird angle, it's, it's in a mirror, right? Somebody took a photo of himself while he was posing in the mirror. And also, he's the kind of bodybuilder that doesn't really look super impressive uh, off the stage and also in the off-season, especially because of his stomach. It kind of looks fat and messed up when he is not super conditioned. When he is conditioned though, it's a different story and on a stage he, he looks good, like he looks really good and I'm saying he probably has the biggest chances to win it, I mean based on his previous performance, but if you take a look at this photo you would say that this guy won't even crack the top 10, I mean that's my impression. But we'll see, I mean you will see once he gets conditioned what's he gonna look like, I'm sure it's gonna be really impressive and potentially a winning physique at that New York Pro. But you actually never know, and maybe something went wrong, and maybe he's not gonna look his best, and maybe Blessing is actually gonna look insanely good, and maybe Nick is also gonna look amazing, maybe these both guys are gonna beat him. So, I mean, these guys are close, so we'll see what's gonna happen on that stage, but as for now, this is what we got, and we can make our own conclusions based on what we can see.
Come on, man. Come on. Are you serious? I mean, this guy, Michael Krizo, Michal Krizo. God, I mean, look at this, this arm. What the hell is going on here? What is this? What kind of a monster he is? Seriously, seriously, guys. I don't remember seeing these kind of muscle bellies lately. And uh, I'm really blown away with this physique. He posted another physique update, not just his arm. And you can see here, it, he looks great. You can see here that the waist is really spot on. The midsection looks really good, like very symmetrical abs, small waist, small stomach, not bloated. And then you can see the arms, they're absolutely crazy. Long arms for a tall guy, but still very full, very thick arms. Shoulders, boulder shoulders popping right there, you can see that. Uh, the legs are looking really good as well. I mean, the chest, this guy is really complete. And he started looking much better this oh, this season. I don't think he looked like this before. Even though he was very impressive before, but now he reached a new level. And I'm really curious what he's going to look like against the top pros. So once again, come on, Mikhail Krizo, please do it. Go to the IBB Pro League. That's where you belong. That's where you belong. You are that good. Do it. And since we are talking about the freaks... There is another underestimated bodybuilder. I mean, he's a man's physique competitor, I believe, based on his posing, of course, and based on the way his legs are looking. But take a look at his upper body. I mean, this is this is maybe even crazier than, than Michael Krizo. I mean, for classic, right? Talking about classic. Yeah, he's doing man's physique probably, but he should do classic physique because look at his freakiness. Back is also pretty good. It's not as good as the as the front upper body, no. But it's looking decent, uh, I guess. There is this conditioning this guy has, this kind of muscle maturity, that grainy muscle look that he has, and he has it all around, everywhere. So he has insane genetics, just absolutely freaky. Yeah, the legs might not be exactly proportionate to his upper body, but you can see that he, you can see that he has genetics, right? He can build those legs up if he really trained them hard, if he stopped training his upper body for a year. Yep, that's what I would do if I was him. I wouldn't touch my upper body at all. I would just hit legs like twice a week. Or, and, and I would really go really hard. Probably with some giant sets. Legs like a lot of volume and something hardcore like that. If he has a desire, he has a passion to actually compete in classic physique. Which is a very popular, very popular and very well respected division these days. So he should definitely consider moving to classic. Of course, it's his choice. It's his career. It's his body. He doesn't have to. He doesn't wanna. But me personally, I would love to see that. I'm sure you would as well. Because look at this. Let's go once again through this footage. I mean, look at look at this. Look at this. Look at the arms and the chest and the waist. Really small waist. Perfect. Pretty much perfect abs, shoulders, and this granity. This this. Uh, this crazy look that his muscle has. I mean, all these muscle fibers and everything just looks so alive. Huge potential in classic physique. All right, so there is a photo that was posted uh, of Phil Heath. It is his current look. And I wouldn't enjoy talking about him for like another three minutes because I don't really have much to say. I mean, I saw his physique, something like this, uh, maybe a few videos ago. I'm sure you guys seen that if you're following this channel. So based on this right here that we're seeing, you can see that he's big, he, he looks good, like, uh, yeah, he looks great, and he probably didn't decide to retire, because if he wanted to retire, he would probably lose like 40 pounds or something at least, because this is not healthy to be this big if you're not really trying to become Mr. Olympia, or at least to compete on a very high level. How would he do if he competed uh, in 2021? Uh, that's, a, that's a question, it depends on how fixed his stomach is. But based on this photo right here, he still has a lot of size. He looks great. And this is how you handle five plates. Now, after that, Ryan Crowley guy tore his spec. You can see what Ian is doing with five plates on an incline Smith machine, though. But still, he's handling it easily. I mean, not easily. He's doing six reps to failure. But five plates, guys, that, that's a lot of weight. And also, uh, if you check the comments... So many people were saying stuff like, don't do that, don't get injured, did you see what happened to this guy, please don't do five plates, and then he edited the caption, he added this text, so let's read it. First he says five plates for six, blah blah, but then he says, uh, for those concerned about the weight I'm using and this exercise due to Ryan Crowley, Larry Wheels video, is that really how you live your life, in fear like that? 
People get in car accidents every fi- every minute of every day. Do you stop driving? No, because you feel confident and safe with your driving abilities. Just as I do with my ability to lift weights like this. I'm not naive to think these injuries can't happen, but I love lifting heavy and I'll never train in fear because of something that happened to someone else. So he made a good point. I mean, of course, you're gonna risk this kind of stuff in your career if you want to be the best, right? No risk, no reward, high risk, high reward. But I don't think he's risking really that much because he's handling this easily. He's, he's doing it with, I mean, I wouldn't say with ease, but six reps, that's a lot. So he would probably be definitely be able to lift much more for one rep like that guy tried. So if he would do, be doing one rep max kind of lifts that he says he's never doing, it would be a different story because that's much bigger likelihood to actually get injured. But doing six reps like this, if you're if you're sure about your ability to lift this kind of weight, probably not gonna happen. So it's really amazing to see him having so much control with five plates, guys. Five plates. This this guy is a strong bodybuilder. He's really strong. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it. If you want to see more, subscribe. All the best, guys, and keep it old school.